So what's the deal breaker? The deal breaker is cer like certainly, you know, disrespect, continuous disrespect would be one. Uh, first and foremost, uh, infidelity. Well, let's let's no, just no, stop no, on the disrespect thing because I wanted to deal with that's a good um, one to hit me out right when mm -hmm. when she doesn't respect you. So mm -hmm. what what is what is the actionable advice to men out there when it comes to they're in an LTR whether they're living together or not or they're married or something like that and she clearly doesn't respect them. Um, I've seen women do this usually in social gatherings around family and it's like to try to disparage them as if to try to have the upper hand to like gain you mm -hmm. know get some frame in the relationship dynamic. Um, what is the go-to mechanism to deal with disrespect for you guys? So go ahead. Cool. I'll start then. No, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Well, that go. really, yeah. It depends on the manner of disrespect. Some guys it's at home, shoots them down for sex, private stuff, right? In that case, it's boundaries, but it's very consistent boundary enforcement. Pull your affection, pull your attention, pull your commitment, commensurate with the boundaries you crossed. In this case, it's disrespect. Some guys really don't care. She can yell at me all she wants to, but if she puts out at the end of the day, good. Other guys are like, I don't want to hear an unkind word. Pick where you want. The other ones that you're talking about that are kind of a little more malicious are ones in public like that. I'd argue the problem there isn't even so much that she's disrespecting you, even though that is a problem. It's the problem in the same way that parenting is a problem. How parents have to have, I know you guys know this, you have kids, a unified front, right? If mom says something, dad backs her up, and then you guys sort it out in private. Or if dad says something, mom backs it up. When you start breaking team like that, it sends a very strong signal to everybody that you guys are... Can I swear? Yeah, of course. Okay. That you basically, the two of you are a piece of shit couple. <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. So normally what you do, and I've had... Like, every guy will have to do this at some point. You just kind of take your girl aside. It's like, hey, you know, that's not on. And if they continue to pull it, you know, thank you very much. I loved having you over for the barbecue. I have to go home now. And then you just leave. And that's the same thing. And then you realize what you can expect. So if she disrespects you in front of people, you're not taking her out anymore. She just lost all those privileges. If she mm -hmm. does it in private, I mean, sometimes guys would have it where their girl was fairly bitchy, disrespectful, and they would literally drive out to like a Walmart parking lot, just park the car, start up a candle and read Rational Mail or Robert Glover. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it sounds stupid. It's like, oh, why would you demean yourself like that to go in the parking lot and read a book? He's like, she doesn't know what you're doing. All you know yeah, you're right. doing is that you're establishing that your presence isn't unconditional. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it sounds stupid. But at the very least, girls hate being alone. And the beauty of this effect is if they actually do value you, you'll notice changes. And if they don't value you, you're not going to notice changes. But either way, you're going to know where you stand. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of the things that I've talked about a few times. Is is women have to understand that they're replaceable. You don't have to say like "bitch, bitch," like you're replaceable. I can get rid of you at any time. But you know, by way of your actions, by the way you live your life, by the mm -hmm. way that you enforce boundaries, like Ryan just explained, like go to the parking lot and read a book if you have to. Whatever. She needs to understand that concept. Yeah, people they they will only treat you as, as much as you'll tolerate though. Yeah. And that's what a lot of guys, they, they get in the relationship and they don't want to lose the relationship. So they start tolerating things that they shouldn't tolerate. When you remove your effort and your time, that sends that message. And I do that without saying anything, you know, just look at her and say, all right, Hey, can you, uh, give her a ride home? All right, cool. And then to walk away, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, that's, that's a great it. example. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really. And then mm -hmm. let her try to pine after you to figure it out. It's mm -hmm. up to her to figure it out. Now up to you to explain to her. See, when you explain to somebody who is pining for who at that point, who's demonstrating that they're the better in this relationship? What message are you sending to her hypergamous brain if you're going, no, sit down. Let me explain to you why you shouldn't say that my <laughs> dick is small in front of all these people, you know, or whatever she said. I'm you know trying I mean? up right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why, you know, like it's like like you, you know, when you do that, you're trying to you know show her that you know you're trying you're the one trying to bring her in. It needs to be the other way around, right? So she, you just remove your time your attention, your energy and effort. And that stays removed and you continue to move along that path. And so she realizes, holy shit, this is going to end. If this keeps going, it's kind of like playing chicken, you know, <laughs> and, and you have to win that game every single time. And you don't do it with little stupid things, but like disrespect would be a bigger thing for sure. You can't tolerate that. Mm. Really? Oh, 
I would say that, and, and just to, to tag something on what Ryan was saying, is that uh, private disrespect becomes public disrespect. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. when you begin to be okay with with her with with her behavior, because we're talking about behavior right here, um, that's because disrespect is a, is a behavior, but it's also motivated by something that's that's coming from up here as well. So I think understanding why she is incentivized or why what is motivating that behavior is more important than the actual behavior itself. But when you are okay with that disrespect, then that translates into it privately, then it becomes okay to fight with you in public, right? Then it becomes okay for her to toss in the uh, occasional kind of like, you know, eye roll or, oh boy, you know, this, this guy, you know, that kind of stuff after a while. And you, and I've seen women do this before um, when they're with their girlfriends, there's someone different than they are when they're with you and her girlfriends or with you and with the family or with you and something else. So they become something different in different social settings. So if she feels like she has to sort of be the, she has to you know find her, her place in the pecking order amongst her girlfriends and her other girlfriends, and I see this all the time, other girlfriends are nagging or they're berating their husbands. And that's a private, because you're not involved in this. This is a private disrespect amongst her friends then that gradually, you know, like death by a thousand paper cuts, it becomes something a little bit more and more and more until you are, you suddenly, you, now you're working on your relationship and it's a relationships are hard work and, and you're trying, you're on the back foot, right? And now you're trying to climb back up the ladder that you thought you were at the top of already. And a lot of guys, when they get to that point, they don't realize the series of events that happened prior to them getting to that point. So when you got a guy who is, uh, you, you guys probably hear this all the time. Like guys will say, like if they're, if they're married or they're in an LTR of some sorts, or they'll go, Rolo, Rolo, I lost the frame. How do I get the frame back? You know, I, I was so alpha when I was 26 and now I'm 31 and I lost the frame and I'm beta all of a sudden. She thinks I'm a beta. Is, can, you, can I ever go back? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, let's rewind everything back to when you were 25 and you were dating. And, and let's, let's look at what happened, the series of events that happened. Because again, it's death by a thousand paper cuts. And if you, the things you will accept in private will end up becoming the disrespect you'll ex you will accept when it is in public. So those are things to watch out for. And then how do you how do you guard against them? And like Paul was saying, sometimes it might be as simple as say, staying silent, having that look right. Um, when your silence inspires more dread than anything you could say, that's when you're alpha. Mm -hmm. When when you are not saying a, a damn yeah. thing, that's and she's like. She's like, oh shit, I know I fucked up. Like, well, that, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that organic, innate in, insight that she goes, okay, I just stepped over. Have you guys, and, and each one of you have girlfriends or have had girlfriends or have a wife or a, <laughs> cohabitating, right? Um, have you ever had them apologize to you for something, for an infraction that they did, that you didn't like, you didn't act pissy, you didn't act like- uh, Yeah, that, oh, yeah. last time. Or anything like that that they they offered you an apology for their behavior or for whatever it was that they were doing um organically of course yeah yeah, yeah all the and, time yeah all the time yeah. Most, that's that's a requirement actually. most guys will never get that yeah really it's true it's very true i want to share a story about private disrespect and why it's important to act immediately <clears throat> i think i might have mentioned this before but in my 20s i was i was um you know i was going out to get groceries and i was dating this girl and she was coming with me at the time um, I don't know, I was 23 or something like that at the time. And she's chirping in my ear the whole time about how um, she was doing the typical comparing your uh, worst to somebody else's best. You know, like one of her girlfriend's boyfriends would spend money on something or take her to a certain event or whatever, right? And it was like, blah, 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 chirp, chirp, chirp. And I'm driving this um, 1990s Suzuki Swift GTI. Like for me, that was a cool car at the time. I was poor as fuck but I knew how to drive it and squeeze hundred percent of the car. And as soon as she said, because you're cheap, I was like, excuse me. <laughs> I grabbed the top of the steering wheel. I reefed it 180 <laughs> degrees. I crossed four lanes over the back wheel probably came up, you know, cocked up like a cocker spaniel. And I zipped mm -hmm. the car home the whole time. She's like, Oh, I'm scared. What are you doing? You know, slow down and all this kind of shit. It wasn't far from the house. I get to the house. I reach over. I open the door. I go get the fuck out. She gets out of the car. You know, still, still chirp me all scared. Like, why are you doing this to us? And blah, blah, blah. I, I grabbed the door. I closed it. And I just fucking drove off. She knew exactly why I turned around because I did it as soon as she called me cheap. Yeah. 
15 she minutes knows. later, when I'm at the grocery machine. store, I'm just pushing my buggy down the aisle, throwing some shit in. I get a tap on my shoulder. You don't get that in a grocery store. I turn around. It was her. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Can we talk about this? Blah, 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 and all that kind of shit. That's how you deal with disrespect. That's how you maintain the frame so you never get to a position where she's not banging you. 